With a name like Conqueror, it sounds like Watofo thinks that this RTA is going to be pretty damn dominant. Let's find out the Watofo Conqueror dual postless RTA. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Vapor Chronicles. Hello and welcome to the Vapor Chronicles. We are back yet again, and this time, a little something from Watofo. Watofo recently released the Serpent RTA, which was a single coil RTA, and I really enjoyed it. A little finicky, a little build uh, skill reliant, you know, you gotta have some skills to be able to build on it and have it wick properly. But once you nailed it, great flavor, uh, great performance, and single coil simplicity. Well, they're back this time with a little innovative RTA uh, called the Conqueror. Does it conquer the vape game? Should it be on your must buy list? All that and more coming up. First, I'd like to thank Watofo for sending me this product for free for the purpose of this review, and that I will do. So we got a lot to cover, so why don't we take a closer look? Let's dive in and break it down. Okay, so here is the Conqueror box. Get some nice, simple one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten instructions, pictures for those low information vapors out there. Tank. Some comp wire. Post screws, O rings, and tool. Pretty standard from what we're used to seeing around here, right? All right, so let's take a look at the actual tank itself. Let's zoom in a little bit. You can see on the front, uh, it does have this etched Conqueror logo right in there. Get a little window here for your juice on the one side at the bottom, and you get another window sort of a little bit past midway right here. It's kind of neat, different. Airflow adjustment from the bottom. Multiple positions, It's uh, you have these little holes. And you can see when you spin this, it locks when you close it all the way. And then one, two, three, four, and five. And it's on both sides. But you could do like, you know, two and a half, 2.5. So there's lots of different adjustments that you can do. Um, you have a 24 karat gold plated contact right here. Four milliliters of juice capacity in this tank. You also have this uh, drip tip right here. They say that it's an anti-heating design drip tip. So I think it just means it's basically hollow inside here. You can see there's a little machining right here on the bottom where they put it together. I'm not sure what that means, but the description they give. You can put standard, you know, drip tips on here, like this one or 528 Customs one. And it does have top fill. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of uh, texture right here, so you can spin this. Real smooth but still a little texture to grab a hold of this. And you can just spin and open up your top to fill. This does have juice flow control, but it's a little different than what you're used to and it's a little strange at first. You'll notice there's a seam right below, right here. See this little ring here? Well, if you take a look in here and you see the chimney, if I spin this, now I'm not spinning the top, I'm spinning here, the whole thing. Notice how the chimney is actually opening up. It's threaded. So that's how you'd open up your juice channels. And if you keep going, eventually it stops, okay? So there's your juice channels, that's where you put your wicks. Sorry about the glare, but this is a pretty shiny piece, but that's one of your, your wicking channels. I'll show you them once we get in there more. All right, so you can close off your juice flow control completely. It could be a little smoother. Maybe when you get some juice in there, 
the o-rings are not going to be so tight uh, to get into the bottom to get to your build deck you just grab the base and just go counterclockwise and here you go and I do always recommend to clean your tanks out when you first get them just in case there's any metal pieces or machining parts or oils or anything like that which I'm going to do in a minute all right the whole entire thing is made of 304 high quality stainless steel and glass now this does have a peak insulator that is made in Germany you can see where the positive posts are there's a peak insulator here and here there's your airflow now this is a postless deck and I'll show you what that means in a minute so basically what you have is you have your positive positive negative negative and it's actually part of the build deck itself and you have these raised airflow openings for each coil this is a only dual coil this uh, RTA so what you want to do is you want to take the included tool so we're going to open up our post grub screws so here stick this in until it stops counterclockwise be careful with these these were pretty tight in there so you want to get some leverage and to try not to strip them so with tofu when you're manufacturing these make sure that these are loose enough to get them out without stripping them all right all right so once you get those out we're going to screw this on the coil master and let's see what kind of coils they give you with this kit maybe we'll use them these look like twisted probably canthaw i would imagine not bad so we'll use them the coils are three millimeters in diameter so the question is how deep does this go so you need about you need about this much length at the bottom to go into the hole okay you need about that much length okay so figure out how high you want it above the actual airflow hole and then you can you can sort of measure it from there so I'm thinking about halfway up the pre-made coil we'll see how that works that seems pretty good maybe a little bit longer next time so once we have our coil in place then we're going to tighten our grub screws And then we're just going to straighten this out a little bit. There we go. I'm going to keep this pretty close to the airflow hole. And I'm going to adjust these a little bit more in a bit. But they're not touching, so I'm not going to have a short. And everything's sort of centered like that. All right. So there's coil one. I apologize that I'm blocking the camera. I'm just trying to hold this coil in place so I can tighten it down. Okay, so let's see what we're looking at in terms of the readings here, and then we'll make some adjustments if necessary. So 0.19, let's do a dry burn and see how we're looking. That's looking nice and even. And uh, let's wick it. So let's use the included wick. They also sent some organic cotton with it. We'll figure out the secrets behind wicking this bad boy. Send this through. Now I have an idea of how I'm gonna wick this to optimize it, I think. We'll see. A lot of times when you stuff these channels really tight, they don't wick well and when I say channels I'm talking about I'll show you one sec when I say channels I'm talking about right here this is a channel 
and there's four openings, okay? So, you know, instead of like pulling this through there and stuffing it in, what I'm going to do is I am going to follow the curvature of the turn here, okay? And snip, keeping everything nice and fluffy, nice and fluffy. Snip. See, I want the juice to be able to really saturate this fluffy wick, but I don't want it to flood the deck if you don't get enough wicking, okay? So all four corners, right with the edge of the, of the actual threading here. So snip, and then I went all the way around. Then I'm just gonna take my, take my little tweezers, and I'm gonna turn them flat, okay? So flat, and I'm just gonna roll this into the deck. Roll it in. Roll it in. So at nowhere along this process did I stuff up those openings to the point where they're tight, okay? Each one of them is really actually very soft and exposed so juice can go right in there. So we're going to wet this a little bit. Uh, what are we going to vape? We're going to vape, uh, do some Pancake Man. We're just going to wet these coils a little bit. Now the airflow is going to come right up the middle on each side of the coil. I have enough airflow space here, I have enough air space here enough here and enough in the middle everything is nice and open to let that flavorful vapor escape all right so that should be good then we're going to take our, our top here and we're going to spin this back on so we're going to close the wicking channels before we fill And the airflow is closed. And we're going to open our top fill. One of the things I notice is sometimes, you know, when you go to open your top fill, if you tighten it too much, you sort of have to hold the, uh, the juice flow control to get this off without taking the other off. Just don't tighten it too much and you should be fine. Then we're going to fill this four mils of juice, nice and open. go. I'm going to screw this back on. And you can adjust your juice flow control with whatever liquid, whatever build you did. I like to open mine up all the way at first. If it starts flooding, then you know you did it too much. So let's open up the airflow at the bottom all the way. And then we're going to open up the juice flow control. So we're going to spin this counterclockwise right at the top here. Without opening up our top fill, And that's open all the way. So if you did it correct, if you have enough wicking in there, hopefully it's not going to be flooding out the bottom. And uh, we should, we're ready to take this thing for a vape and see how she vapes. Tank's full. Let's zoom back out. The squeaky chair. No, I'm just kidding. The up close. There you go. Pretty interesting. Uh, nice build on here. You know, these, these coils, these whatever special coils that they sent with it, the twisted coils, uh, they seem to perform really well. And let's jump right to me vaping this thing. Uh, 0.2 ohms, 93 watts on the Volcano Lava Box. I haven't vaped this in a while, the DNA 200. So 93 watts, let's take it for a vape. Airflow is wide open, by the way. No, it's not. Let's open it. Yeah, airflow is wide open. Tank is getting low, but it's still good. And... Uh, Juice flow control is wide open. Okay, so the first thing that I notice on this thing, 
Since it has dual airflow openings underneath the coils, depending on how high, how low, how wide, um, the size of your coils, all that matters to airflow, okay? I built these coils pretty close to the holes, so I'm getting exceptional flavor, but a little bit turbulent in the airflow department. When the build was out of the device, I actually vaped it and the airflow was nice and smooth. I think this is more of an outcome of my build, uh, but the airflow, pretty noisy in its current configuration. Now if I close off the airflow to two holes, still excellent flavor. And if I close it off all the way to one or half a one, <laughs> way too fucking, way too fucking hot. Holy shit. <clears throat> that was way too hot. Uh, the juice is getting low, so I need to be careful not to dry hit that shit. That was not a dry hit, by the way. I'm a professional. So, this thing is not as open and as, as airy as something like, say, the Aromamizer Supreme. I mean, that thing's like, you know, breathing straight air from your mouthpiece. Uh, this thing is a little bit more restrictive, but, but the flavor from those bottom airflow openings is very, very, very good. Wicking, awesome. 93 watts, guys. 0.2 ohms, and it's just wicking like a dream. Let me just drain this tank real quick. You know when a wick is at its peak wetness and you're just getting that flavor pop? This thing flavor pops the whole time, okay? Flavor pop, pop, pop. It just pops. Excellent flavor, easy to build once you get those the height. You know, that's the only thing that's a little challenging with these uh, postless build decks is you're not pulling your, your wire through the post and then clipping it. You have to pre-clip it and then set it. Play around with it a little bit. You'll start to learn the height and what you want. Um, you could probably do some pretty sick builds in here. You want to build like a super big vertical coils or something like that. There's a lot of space in there because you don't have posts to be able to do builds. Uh, I have not had any leaking problems. You saw how I wicked it. That's exactly how this is wicked right now. Uh, it drains quick, but so does freaking everything because when you want vapor production and you want flavor, you got to drain the juice. Some cons. Well, it's 22 millimeters in diameter. Hopefully, they'll have a bigger one in the future. But I think it looks pretty sexy. And you know what? I have some devices that this actually would sit really nice on. Uh, actually, it looked really good, surprisingly, on this little E-Leaf iStick Pico. Little Pico. Look at this little stealther. So 75 watts on the Pico, right? That build. Wonderful. I think it looks really pretty on there. Kind of top heavy, but it looks good. Kind of neat. It would look great on an Evic VTC Mini. Um, you know, 22 millimeter diameter tanks are not dead, by the way. But, you know, for the big Relo RX200s and a lot of the big 26650 mods, these bigger 25 millimeter, 24 millimeter, and bigger uh, are starting to be really popular. Price, awesome. Great price, great performance. And I think it's got really good looks. I love the dual window action. Love the little etched conqueror on the front. Removable drip tip, top fill. Uh, airflow, it's not the biggest open airy, but it's not super, super tight. It's kind of in between. Uh, flavor, exceptional. Build quality, it's very good. All right. The biggest cons I could say about this is the fact that you can't take the tank apart. So if you break this glass, even though it's very well protected because the metal is raised here, uh, you can still crack the glass, and if you crack it, you're done. Uh, also, cleaning, you're going to have to soak it because you can't take it apart to, to wash it. All right. With those things taken into consideration, juice flow control, top fill, flavor, postless build deck, innovation, at a price around uh, 30 and under I've seen. So good job with Tofo. Uh, another RTA to add to your uh, arsenal. If you're a, you know, a build magician and you like to throw some builds together that are crazy, this might be for you. It's definitely cool, high quality, and I dig it. So that's pretty much it. If you enjoy my content, if you like my channel, why don't you subscribe and click below. And uh, you can also find me on all my social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, links below. Every Thursday night, 
10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Myself, Mike Vapes, and Vape and Fagan, we do it live on the Vape Team. Vape Team channel, YouTube, live show, all things vape every single week, and a lot of fucking shenanigans. So if you like shenanigans, if you like jokes, if you like to have fun in your life, you might enjoy the Vape Team. All right? Thanks for watching, everyone. I got a whole lot more where this came from. I'll see you soon.